All right, we're going to complete the transparent mode config. In the first podcast, I went through all the commands for the uh, initial config uh, to get everything up and running. But now we want to add some access rules to our ASA that's in transparent mode. I, uh, the first access rules we're going to add, we're going to add at the command line. So you need to get it at your uh, console, config T, and we're going to create an access list. We're going to call it transparent out transparent out out uh, and we're basically going to let everything out permit IP any any probably not the best security policy but hey we're just getting started out right now so we'll we'll go we'll go easy on on what we're filtering for and then we're gonna want to apply that interface that access list to the interface and the way we do that is the access group command access groups trends parent out this needs to match the name of our access list so make sure you spell it the right way transparent out and then we want to put it on the uh, in the inbound direction on the inside interface interface inside so basically any packets that come inside come in the inside interface will get evaluated against this access list so it has you go do some testing to see if you can get out uh, to my web server and whatnot. So do your testing. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect with the GUI tool to manage the A, uh, ASA. So first we need to do is make sure we have IP connectivity. Uh, make sure your IP address is somewhere uh, that you can connect to it. In theory, it should work uh, from your uh, LANs at this point. Uh, we gave it the IP address 243.203. Uh, for management, All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the certificate uh, so we can load into Java. I've already done this uh, for testing, but I'll show you how you need to do it. You need to, if you're using Chrome, you need to go to Developer Tools, Security, and then you can do View Certificate. You want to go to Details, Copy to File, Next, Next, Pick the Desktop. And then save it. I call mine ASA.sir. I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it once. Right? Once you do that, then you can edit your Java settings. So you want to go configure Java. Right? We need to edit security. We want to manage certificates. We want to, uh, for the user, add a secure site. And then you're going to import the ASA. So you hit import, find your certificate, all files. Uh, ASA.sir and hit open. I've already done that, so I'm not doing that again. If you do not do that, your ASA, your uh, console will fail. To, your, you will fail to be able to connect to the ASA when you get this tool installed. So once you get your certificate in there, then you want to go ahead and install ADSM Launcher. That's going to download. No, no password at this point. Just hit login. That's going to download this thing. Run that. I've already done it again, so I'm not doing it again. You'll run that, just take all the defaults. And then once that finishes, you need to go to C, Program Files, x86, Cisco Systems, ASDM, to run the launcher. All right? Once you run the launcher, it shows up. You want to put the IP address of your ASA, the management IP address. So 243.203. No username or password at this point, because we didn't set one. So log in and take the, take the warnings. So if you have trouble with that, uh, let me know. I can help you out. Usually it's uh, either connectivity related, like you don't have IP connectivity to the device because you don't have an IP address or your IP address isn't correct for where you're connected, or uh, the Java certificate nonsense issue. So once you get logged in, we're going to want to go to configuration, firewall, access rules, and you see that we have this rule that we added, any, any IP to let everything in. So we want to add another rule on the outside interface. So we're going to do this in two steps. One, we're going to add a any any IP rule to let anything in, and we'll hit apply, and that'll apply it to the ASA. If we go do show run, show run, this thing's flashing. I guess it's got a problem. No, no problem. Good. If we go do show run, in theory, we should be able to find our new access list. So now we have an access list called outside access in. And if we look down, we should see that it's applied to the outside interface. So our rule's in there. So now at this point, you're going to go do your testing again. And at this point, everything should work. You should be able to get out to my network. And from my network, you should be, get, be able to get into your network.
So once we get that working, then we want to make a change to secure our network a little more. Uh, the lab is written to tell you to change this rule to now we want to edit it and we want to allow some different services. So delete IP out of there. And we want to add HTTP. So we'll filter for that. We want to add HTTP for TCP. Right? We don't need UDP, HTTP. We want to add HTTPS. We want to add domain because that's what uh, DNS is called. We want the UDP domain. We don't need TCP and UDP. And then we want to be able to ping our server. So uh, we're going to do ICMP. Right? That's the easiest thing to do. ICMP. If you wanted to be very specific, you could say, I want to let echo in, which echo is, uh, is the ping echo request. But we're just going to do all ICMP just to make our lives a little bit easier at this point. So you'll put that in, hit OK, apply that to the firewall, and now you'll go test again. And everything should still work uh, because the, the, uh, we put the specific rules we need in. If you want to test that your firewall is actually working uh, properly, these things are allowed. You should try to SSH in from the outside and make sure that's still blocked. Uh, that should should continue to fail uh, because we're not allowing SSH in. So that's pretty much all we're doing for the transparent mode config. So once you're done, you want to, I want you to get your config to save. You can try to use TFTP to save it if you want, or you can just do show run, right? Copy and paste it all, and then save it that way. So at this point, we need to get our firewall out of transparent mode to um, do the next step of the lab, which is to put it in routed mode. So we did not save our, our running config, so we don't need to do anything. If you did save your running config, you can do write erase. That erases the startup config. Yes. And now when you reload, um, you're going to be in the, we don't want to reload yet. Yeah, we're going to do this. No reload, no reload. So we, we, erase the, we erase the config and the startup config. So now if we try to go uh, to change the mode, firewall routed, it didn't like that. It won't let you change that for some reason once it's in transparent mode. So the way you have to get it out of transparent mode is to erase the config and reload it. So um, we erase the config with the right erase right erase and now we want to reload reload if it has been modified no we don't want to save uh, the config confirm we reload yes we're not going to wait for this to reload but once this this finishes reloading you're going to have no config so you need to follow the steps to to make sure that your router has the factory default config I said router I meant firewall you're going to follow the steps to make sure your firewall is in the factory default config. And uh, there's the next podcast. It tells you how to do that at the beginning of it. So uh, go watch that podcast. It's the one about configuring the ASA in routed mode.